morning, Mountain Rivers Church, and good morning to our online family. And we want to say a very special uh, good morning and welcome to those of you guys who might be new this morning. We, um, we're really, really glad that you're here. And uh, today's a very special day, and it's Sunday. It's God's day, and this is the day the Lord has made. His word says rejoice. And be glad in it. We have so many things to be thankful for today. God has done so many wonderful, wonderful things. And the fact that you have made time to be here is so huge to me. It says so many things to me. It means that you have your priorities straight. And really, you're making time for God to do something amazing in your life. And that really is very, very huge. And I hope that you grasp this morning that it's not an accident. And I know that becomes cliche in the church. We hear a lot, but it's not. It truly, the Bible says that you are drawn by the power of the Holy Spirit. You're drawn by God brought you here. Let that sink in for just a second. God, you're, you're always looking for signs. You're looking for God to move and do this and do that. God literally, miraculously drew you here by His presence this morning to sit where you're sitting and hear His powerful, unchanging word. God has a word for you today. God has a message that He wants to bring to you. So enjoy the presence of God. Enjoy the, the love of God's people and get ready for the word of God. Amen. How many of you guys are glad church doesn't have to be boring? Yes. Yes, me too. Like there is no reason that you should have to come into God's house and be like, oh, it's Sunday. It's just another day. No, it's not. It is the best day of the week. Because we get to come into God's house and we are fired up. Brad and I have had like four hours sleep and like four hours awesome. coffee. Love it. We are fired up because today yes. is an awesome day. First service was amazing and you guys are in for a very big treat today. But Great I do want to tell you before we really get started, if you are new or maybe you've been here for a while and you don't know us, you haven't got a chance to get to know your crazy pastors. We want to invite you to come out on Wednesday night at 7 o'clock and we do a newcomer's life group in our office. And we do it. Sounds like fun, right? It does. <laughs> hey, if we're there, it's fun. And there's cookies and there's fruit. My mom we is, it out. she is the cookie monster. She is awesome. Wait, no, she's Thank the cookie all. maker and I'm the cookie monster because I eat them. And so um, we really need you to come and eat these cookies. Uh, there, you know, there's something about life where you know you just want to be a part of something greater than yourself, and there's a greater number of cookies when you're not there, and so you need to come and you need to help me eat them. I will tell you if you're conscious about your health, you really have that resolution, this New Year's resolution of being healthy. We do have fruit. We do have fruit to accompany the cookies, and so if you want fruit, that's fine. I will eat the cookies. It's good. It's all gonna be good. So come. But that was not her pure resolution. I didn't say that. Cookies, Did I like, say that? But you know what? Here's, here's the point. We want to get to know each and every person that yes. goes to this church. Yes. We don't want to just see a face in the crowd Personally. and shake your hand maybe or maybe you dart out the side because you don't want to shake our hand. Right? We want to know, we know who you, are. you and we want you to get to know us and we want you to know what an incredible story God has right here in this little community at Mount Rivers Church. So today... We're going to get started with this awesome word. If you will, bow your head, we're going to pray. Father God, we are so excited. God, that we get to come into your house. What a privilege it is, God, that we were able to come today divinely directed by you to hear your word. Today is a special day, Father God, and we pray that our hearts would be open, our minds would be ready to receive, God, that you would anoint us to speak directly the words that you want your people to hear today. God, may we apply it to our life and forever be changed. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You guys are going to love this message. It's going to be awesome. Like, seriously. In fact, I put out a post this morning on the Facebook page. Uh, I said, I'm so excited about today's message. I actually drank three cups of coffee just to get me to calm down. Um, because I'm that excited. This, this is such an awesome, powerful word. I hope you're ready to take notes. Because seriously, this is going to be a, a really good message. So I want to start with just a few very powerful, life-changing questions. And the question is, when you think about the person you are today, is it the person you planned on being yesterday? When you think about the person you are today, is it the person you planned on being yesterday? Man, this is good. Who did you dream of becoming? Notice I didn't say, what did you dream of doing? Who 
did you dream of becoming? It's good. <laughs> Who did you dream of becoming? I'm not talking about the house you live in. I'm not talking about the car you drive. I'm not talking about your achievements. I'm talking about you. I'm, I'm asking you, are you the person you planned to be? Who did you dream of being as a person? Oh, my word. Who knows who Cary Grant is? <laughs> Cary Grant's awesome, right? Vintage American actor. He's the best. He's awesome. Cary Grant said this. He said, ready? It's deep. Everyone wants to be Cary Grant. Even Cary Grant. Signed, Cary Grant. Right? He, he portrayed this, this, this identity, this person in his movies. And he's saying, that's not me. But boy, would I love to be that person. That would be awesome if I could be the person that I portray to be. Actors. Man, alive. I love it. What a great question to ask. Who do you want to be? Are you the person that you planned on becoming yesterday? My, 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 my. Okay, so I want to read you something. This was not written by me, but I want to read it to you because it's really, really good. It says, one of my favorite literary characters of all time is Atticus Finch. You know who that is? Raise your hand. Atticus Finch was in what story? Little, to Kill a Mockingbird. To Kill a Mockingbird. How to Kill a Mockingbird. How many of you guys read that book? How many of you guys finished the 8th grade? Okay, <laughs> great. All right, so To Kill a Mockingbird, Atticus Finch. Love that character. It's played by Gregory Peck. He played the role in the movie uh, where he perfectly captured the character of this quintessential wise father. You know I didn't write it because I don't know how to say quintessential and I don't know how to spell it. So, quintessential wise father and man of compassion, honor, and integrity. I wanted to know him and I wanted to be like him. Role models are a good way to begin defining who we want to be. It may not be Atticus for you, but you probably know the people whose demeanor, behavior, and values are inspiring and motivating for you. You're a better person because you get around these people. So who are those people maybe in your life or people that you see on TV that you just aspire to want to be like them? It's great. But then you start to talk to yourself and you say... I can't be that person because of this. And you start developing these, these emotions and these excuses in your mind. Oh, I, 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 I have this challenge and that challenge. And I'm, I'm, I'm angry and I'm frustrated. I never finish my goals and, and I deal with depression. Or I've made mistakes. I've done this and I've done that. And you beat yourself up because of your life story. And you, and you, you put yourself in this position where you put a title on yourself. Nobody else is doing it. Maybe they are doing it, maybe they're not, but you definitely do it to yourself. And you say, I can't do this, I can't do that because of the way things were, because of the, 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 this, the deck of cards I was handed, if you will, whatever, the way life just rolled out and, and my story, it's, man, I just, I can't. I can't. It's not me, but I would love to be this person. I want you to imagine in your mind that person, the person that you want to be. What does she look like? How does she act? How does she speak? How does she treat other people? What does he look like? How does he act? How does he speak? How does he treat other people? Who do you want to be? We believe that our personality is set in place and we make excuses and we say it's just not possible for me to be that person. But look at the scripture. Look at what the powerful, life-changing word of God says to us in Matthew 19 and 26. I'm going to paraphrase it because... I studied it out in, in, in another version. I think it was, um, may have been NIV, but it says, With man, these things are impossible. But with God, all things are possible. With, I know we take that word for granted because it's so simple and we use it so much, but it means alongside. To align yourself next to men, mankind, Humanity, the things of this world, the things we put our trust in, these things, the Word says, they're impossible. But, contrasting conjunction with God, it opens up this whole new ballgame, and now all of a sudden, all things 
are possible. There's nothing left out. Everything with God is possible. So that means that the, the scripting that we gave ourselves for our life, the person that we've become, and we look at the story, and we look at who we are, who we've, who we've kind of just, we've become this person overnight. We blinked our eyes, we wake up, and we're this person. And he says, it's possible for you to change. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. You become a brand new creation in Christ Jesus when you fully give yourself to Him. All things are possible to Him who believes. All things. All things. You and me, we can change. Things can get better. Things can be different. We can actually think differently than we used to think. We can act differently than the way we used to act. Right? We can change. It's hard to change, but I'm not talking about, you know, uh, I'm not talking about hard. I'm not talking about difficult. I'm talking about possible. And there's a really, really big difference when we're dealing with the maker of the planets. God is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above and beyond what we can imagine, ask for, comprehend, dream of, or even think of. God can do it in your life. God is able. She told me never do this. Look at somebody and say, God is able. God is able. She said it makes people feel awkward. No, awkward. Talk to people in church. But it's fun. Talk to people. You should talk to people at church. You really should try it. It's, it's fun. It's not during the message. Not during the message. It's, I know, but... <laughs> Alright, let's take a poll. If you think it's cool to talk in church during the message, raise your hand. Well, it depends on they talking to us. Like, to one yeah, another. Okay, if you are with Misty and you say this is not cool, don't do that, Pastor. Raise your hand. Be honest. Um, I'm not going to be hurt. Yeah, all your leaders are like right here. All right. Now, now I know who y'all are. Now I know. Now I know. God can do it. We can change. We can be different. We can be better. So, so when we ask that question, who do you want to be? I'm really, I'm kind of tricking you because I'm not really asking who you want to be, but I am. What? I don't really mean like who do you want to be, but, but I am saying who do you want to be question is really, who does God want you to be? But then that sounds super spiritual. It's like, well, of course, yeah, we all want to be who God wants us to be. But who do you want to be? Genesis 1 and 27 says, So God created human beings in His own image. Hmm. In the image of God, He created them. We were made in the image of and in the likeness of God. What does that mean? It means we were created. We were wired. We were sculptured. Crafted in His hands to be like Him. Wow. And that's really powerful. That is that's crazy. I, 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 was, I was talking to a friend of mine. I haven't seen him since high school. A long time ago. Part. I'm sorry, I didn't see I didn't see where in the notes where you're supposed to. When do you read the notes? <laughs> That's a good point. That's a really good point. I don't really read the notes. That's a good point. Um, so I was talking to my friend. Haven't seen him since high school, and he had become an attorney and moved to Chicago. Always very logical, analytical thinker. You know, very very smart, sharp dude. Did not believe in God. Never believed in God. Always just proclaimed that he was an atheist. There, there is nothing that could have possibly created what we see. We're just here by evolution, and it is what it is. And, you know, and so he saw me. I put out this post on Facebook one morning, and, and, and I wasn't trying to be offensive by any means. I was just being transparent. And my, my thought was, you know, I said, I, I just don't understand how people can look at creation. And, and they can see how all of the heavens are aligned with planets and the sun is right where it needs to be and the earth is on its axis at the right, uh, you know, the right angle and the degrees of, you know, I'm trying to sound smart, but, you know, I don't really know how it all works. But it's hanging there, it's suspended in space. And there's oxygen around us and there's water that we need to drink. It just so happens it's here and there's animals and there's fruit growing on trees that produces oxygen so it all can happen again. And I'm thinking, that is pretty smart, whoever came up with that. Thank you, evolution, for creating 
such a wonderful cycle of intelligence that works together hand in hand like that. That is amazing. How did you do that? I wasn't that sarcastic. But now that I recap my thought, I'm like, that is so stupid. And, and, and so, but my post was just, I don't see how people can call themselves atheists. And if you're atheist and you're like, I love you, I'm not knocking on you, I'm just saying, I don't see how you can wrap your mind around that concept. And, and he, he, he messaged me, and he said, Brad, he said, I've always respected you, I think a lot of you, but he said, I take great offense to that comment because I'm an atheist. And so we opened up a great conversation, and we just started kind of, you know, texting back and forth and just, you know, just talking about evolution and creationism. And, you know, by the, and, and he's a great guy. I mean, he's, he's awesome. He is really a good person. And, and, and we were just talking about, you know, what, what do you live for? Because I live for the joy and the peace of knowing that I'm going to have eternal life in heaven as my home, and I'm taking as many people with me as I possibly can. And he said, Brad, he said, here's what life boils down to. If, if, I can, if I can die on my bed and be put in the ground and I dissolve and become ashes and my life is done, if I can look back and say that I was a good person and that I was generous and that I was kind and that I was thoughtful and I, I helped people and I was a great contribution to society, I will have felt really good about the life that I live. I said, dude, that is beautiful. That is, that, I said, that's what I want. I said, but I know why I want it. Why do you want it? I said, the reason I want it is because I want to align my life with who God is and who He wants me to be so that I have a place in heaven with Him to be grafted in the vine and the adoption of the children of Israel to become a, a son of God and inherit eternal life and, and be with Jesus and rule and reign for a thousand years. I didn't say all that. I was just a magnifying story. But I said, that's what I want to do. But why do you want to do all that? He said, it's just the right thing to do. It's just, it's, it's just morally right. I said, dude, do you hear what you're saying? I said, if there's no God, who are you trying to be right for? I said, if there's nothing, if there's if there's no God, there's no such thing as right or wrong. He's the one who sets that moral standard for us. I said, who are you trying to be right for? Man, I said, if I was in your shoes, Go sleep with whoever you want to sleep with. Get drunk every night. Have an awesome time. Live it up. Do whatever you want to do. Cheat, lie, steal. Do it all. Have fun, man. Why on earth would you care about being a contribution to society and being a nice person and generous and kind? Who cares? Why? What's the purpose? There's no right and there's no wrong. Go for it. But the fact is, I said, the reason you feel the way you feel, the reason you have this drawing inside of your heart and your mind to, to act right and, and live right and to be kind and generous and to, to, to be a generous society, you know, contribution, that the reason you feel like that is because you were wired and created in the image and likeness of God to be like God. Because he draws the moral standard of what's right and what's wrong. He is the measurement. His son is the measurement of who we need to be. I said, do you not realize that inside of you there's a drawing for God is calling you to be like him? So the closer you can get to him, the more you'll position yourself to be with him forever. Do you not hear God speaking to you? God wants you to inherit eternal life because there is a God. He's talking to you and heaven needs to be your home. That's why you feel the way you feel about being a good person. Because you were created in the image and the likeness of God. We were all wired to be like Jesus. Who do you want to be? Whether you admit it or not, we all, regardless of where we're at in our spiritual journey, each and every one of us are wired to want to be like Jesus. And we don't even know it. It doesn't matter what you believe about God. You're wired by God to be like God. And so when we ask ourselves these questions, when I, when I, at my funeral, what do I want them to say about me? None of us in this room say, I hope they say I was the richest person they knew. 
I hope they say that, you know, that, that, that I did this or I got this award or did that. No, all of us are saying to ourselves, I hope they say, man, he spent a lot of time with his kids and he was so kind and he would do anything for anybody and, and he was just so generous. He'd take the shirt off his back for any person and, and he was, man, he was just, he loved people. That He was just amazing. I mean, those are the things we think of. Why? Because we're wired to be like God. That's right. That's right. You know, I don't know about you, but when we turn the corner on a new year, every single year, my mind always goes back and I think about my past. And I turn around and I think about what I've accomplished and, and what I've done. But this year, I want you to think not about the accomplishments and the things you've done or not done or where you are, but to think about who you are. When you look back, all the way back to your childhood, to who you are today, who do you want to be this year? You know, a lot of times we like to justify things in life. We like to say, well, you know, I have a temper and this is just how I am because my mom or my dad had a temper and my grandpa had a temper, so I have a temper and it's just how it is. My mom was a nag. My grandma was a nag. My great grandma was a nag, so I'm going to just be a nag. And we roll out these justifications to just say, I am who I am, get over it. I've heard people say, you either like me or you don't. I'm, I am who I am. But what we all do is we look in the mirror every day. We all look in the mirror. And deep down, are we really the person we want to be? A lot of times, the answer to that question is no. Oftentimes, myself, I've even told myself, I don't even like myself. I don't want to be this way. God, help me. This is not who I want to be. I don't want to lose my cool on my kids. I don't want to snap their little heads off. Even though I said it in the moment. I don't really want to. Can you imagine how I want to go to jail? I love them. I gave birth to them. This is not where you go to jail. And you think about it. Forget that your kids are dead. Snap their head off. What you think about this? A lot of times people say that habits, Habits are easy to form and hard to break. But I would tell you I disagree with that. Let me tell you why. I think that bad habits are easy to form and they're hard to break. But good habits, good habits, good life-changing habits, they're hard to form and they're really easy to break. You see, our life is made up of choices. We each get to choose who we want to be. God has wired us to want to be like Him, even if we don't understand it. We want to be good people. We want to have unconditional love and forgiveness. We don't want to be full of anger and hate and nasty, even though sometimes we are. Sometimes life has just dealt you a bad hand and so you feel like you have the right. But deep down, you're not proud of that. Deep down, you want to have those characteristics of God. But it takes choices, and choices establish our habits. And our habits establish our future and our destiny. So this morning, we're going to do something that's kind of going to be fun. We want you guys to take out your phones. Yeah, I did say take out your phones. And we want you guys to help us with an illustration. We want to know what are some of the bad habits that are in our life. Now, we're not going to tell who said them. No, we won't I don't care if it's your bad habits or your spouse's bad habits or your kids or your neighbors <laughs> or I don't care who they are. And your good habits. What are the good habits that would be good, life-changing habits? You guys can text your good habits to 314-5028. Okay, that's your, that's your number. That's mine. Well, why are they texting their bad habits to me? How do I end up with the bad habits? <laughs> Nine one eight three one four five zero two seven. Text us some examples. This may not be you, but it could be. But text some examples of bad habits to me, good habits to her. All right. So I think we have a few. Do you want to start? All right. One good habit. Here we go. <gasps> Read my Bible before leaving my house every single day. Good. That is a life-changing habit. Yeah, this is a really bad habit. This says eating all the donuts at church. <laughs> <laughs> that is horrible. And I know who you are. <laughs> that is awful. All right, here's another one. Praying before school. And I don't know if that was a, a kid or a teen or an adult, 
But that is very good. Praying before you go to school. Okay, uh, eating late at night. Bad habit. It is a bad habit. You know what it does? It just totally sucks your energy right out of your body. Your body is is burning calories and trying to digest your food while you're sleeping, so you're actually not sleeping very good. You wake up exhausted. Don't do it. All right, sorry. All right, here's another one. Listening to Christian music in the car. Praying in the car every day. That is so good. If you listen to k which is 90.7, they always start the year with a 30-day challenge. I thought you were laughing at me, but I realize you're laughing. I'm just reading these. These are awesome. It's really a good challenge to turn on Christian music and keep it always going in your car. Right. Okay. Let's see here. Um, oh, somebody else said eating all the donuts at church. What is going on? This is insane. All right. Um, <coughs> Not praying before I leave the house or going to bed. That's good. That's I mean, good. it's bad. It's well, bad. it is a bad habit. It's good. Yeah. That, this is good. That was bad. <laughs> Having family devotions. That's a very good life-changing habit. Absolutely. Okay, smoking. Yeah. All right. Destructive. Here we go. Throwing kisses to God every morning and every night. That's good. Okay, not forgiving when I need to. How many of us are really, really struggle with that? Very true. Tithing. That is a very good habit. Very What's the favor of God on your life? Absolutely. <laughs> Getting angry when the Sooners lose. Oh. <laughs> Depends and, on who you are. Um, snapping your kids' heads off. Yes. <laughs> That's a bad habit. Bad habit. Me too. Oh, they got that. Spending time in my war room. If you've seen them. Oh, movies, yeah. Room, you know Who's got a war room? Anybody have a war room now yeah. since you've seen the movie? Yes? Let me throw something right. in here. I may have told the story that after we watched the movie War Room, we didn't go to the man night. Remember how the men of this church had a That's right. man That's night? Right. All the girls got left out. Well, my daughters and I had never seen that movie until recently, like two weeks ago, because Brad never took me. So, um, I waited until it came out on DVD and I Wait bought it myself. Okay, Are you, okay. we don't have time for that. We so, Mia and I, and Ty actually, Ty wasn't feeling good. He stayed home. Brad goes to Star Wars. I don't care. About That's that. what I was going to tell you. I don't care. So, Brad goes to Star Wars. Do you guys remember not too long ago I told you I hadn't seen a man movie since we got married? I went and saw a man movie. I went and saw Star Wars. I so proud of you. I gave you an opportunity to go. I don't want to go. And you so, chose not to, so it's your life. So, me and Mia and Ty, we watched War Room. And my kids were zoned in. If you haven't seen it, I'll loan it to you or go get it. It's awesome. They're zoned in. When it's all over, the next morning, Mia comes and we're having family devotions on a Saturday. And she's like, Mom, do we have any extra rooms in this house? And I'm thinking, we all know there's no extra room in this house. I mean, no, you know, Mia's like, what about a closet? And I knew immediately where she was going. And I'm thinking, that's sweet. But man, there's no closet I can clean out, right? And I said, do you want to make a war room? And she said, yeah. And I said, that's awesome. I said, you're going to have to get creative, though, because I don't know how we can clear a room. So that night when she goes to bed, she comes and gets Brad and I, and every night we check our kids in and we pray with them. And she comes and gets us and she goes, come check me in, I want to show you something. And they have bunk beds, so she's got the top bunk. And she had made herself a war room. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, you've got to see the movie. But in the war room, which was their prayer, their place of doing battle and prayer, and they posted scriptures and prayers all over the place. Mia had went in and already started, and she had written prayers out, and she had them hung up. And I'm telling you guys, the girl's 11, okay? Every day since then, that girl has posted more. And so, and I normally really a little bit of OCD of a freak, and I don't like them taping things to the wall, and I don't like cheesy posters attached to the true. wall. This is true. But this, I am like, no, I have to, it, no matter how crazy, if the whole room turns into nothing but prayers and scripture, yes. I'll let it go. Yes. So awesome. Yeah. Good habit. Get in your work. Okay, uh, bad habit would be um, like shutting the alarm off like five times. <laughs> this is so true. Who's guilty? How many sets of three oh, alarms? Every day, right here. I'm with you. I have multiple alarms that go off. All right, maybe one or two more. It says talking to people about Jesus at work. That is such a good habit. Great habit. Um, any more? Yeah, I was just wondering if they were going to get fired. If you do, it's okay because God will provide another job. I'm telling you right now, He is faithful. Um, trying to fix things myself instead of letting God have control. I love it. And going to bed without praying. That's a good one too. Very good. All right. The last one I'm going to read on the good side is reading your Bible before going to school and at school. Yes. Even at school. Pull it out. So these are good.
habits, and I want you to think about this. It is easy to have those bad habits. It's easy to get in the habit of having a cookie a day or a candy bar a day. I know it. Yeah, tell them about Christmas. Well, I'm not going to go into the whole story. No, you should. I, you should make I really it. pride myself in being a healthy person. Yes. And I don't allow the bad in the house because I am very weak. Okay, I'll just be honest. Like, if it's there, Reese's are my favorite, I'm going to have to open it up and eat it. I don't even go in the mood for that reason because we have them in there. But at Christmas time, I wanted to be a good all-American mom. And so I wanted to do the whole Christmas candy thing. And so I bought like every flavor of chocolate chips imaginable. All the different chips. Because the peanut butter, last service you said because you wanted out. to make a bunch of candy for people. And I did. Give it out did you guys get any? Okay, no, you Nobody didn't. Got any, because did you? I never got to it, right? There's a reason so, why you didn't get anything. So I bought all these different chips and I put them all in the cabinet and all the stuff to make the candy. And we didn't really have time. We got really busy. And so, but it, we started running out of them. And I'm thinking to myself, how are those bags disappearing? And I started thinking about it. And I thought, you know, man, it's so true that habits are easy to form. Because what I decided to do is every time I would go past mm -hmm. the utility room, I kind of gave myself a treat. And that is I would dump some of those chocolate chips or those almond chips or those vanilla chips into my hand, pop them in my mouth and have a sip of coffee just as a treat. And I wasn't really counting the calories because it doesn't count if it's not a real candy bar or it's not a real piece of pie on the plate. It doesn't count. And then I realized that I'm not sure how many bags of candy I went through, but I didn't get to anything. And I thought, habits are so easy to form. And I'm telling you, I haven't broke it yet. I think yesterday I only did it once. And I thought, this has got to stop. It has to stop. Break the cycle in Jesus' name. It has to. Has I'm to telling stop. you guys, Paul said the same thing. In Romans, the Apostle Paul said this. He said, I want to do what's right, but I can't. Romans 7, verse 18. I want to do what's good, but I don't. I don't want to do what's wrong, yet I do it anyway. Does this sound familiar? Verse 21, I have discovered this principle of life, that when I want to do what's right, I inevitably do what is wrong. Ow! What in the world? There was a beetle on the back of your head. I killed it. Sorry. I'm sorry. I get, I get distracted, and that thing's been flying around, like, for five minutes. We were talking about when Got it. you should not do what's wrong. Yeah! I'm wrong. really sorry about that. Verse 22. Damn. Moving on from the ADD moment. I love God with all of my heart. But there is another power within me, within my mind. This power makes me a slave to sin that is still within me. Oh, what a miserable person I am. How many of you know that when you continue to do what you don't want to do, you are miserable? If you tell yourself, man, I'm going to get up in the morning, I'm going to work out, I'm going to do it, and then you oversleep, what do you do? You feel like a loser. That's why a lot of us don't even set new resolutions. Why? Because we don't want to break them and feel like a loser. We don't want to feel miserable like Paul's talking about. He goes on, who will free me from this life that is dominated by sin and death? Thank God there is an answer and it's Jesus Christ our Lord. So you see how it is. In my mind, I really want to obey God's law. But because of my sinful nature, I am a slave to sin. So now there is no condemnation to those who belong to Christ Jesus. Listen to this verse. Underline it. Because you belong to him, the power of life-giving spirit has freed you, and it's freed me from the power of sin that leads to death. Let me tell you today, you have a choice. It's your decision. Who you want to be ultimately comes down to yourself because God has already given you all the power you need to choose to do what is right. You don't have to continue to choose to be miserable. You don't have to choose to justify and to say, just because this is the way I've always been, this is the way I will continue to be. You can choose. It comes down to a decision. Today, as we wrap it up, we're going to give you three steps Three steps that will help you choose to be who you really, really want to be. It's your decision. Step number one is this. Decide who you want to be. We know that God has already put it inside of us to want to be like Him. But here's the deal. You have to decide. Because it's easier to be hateful than it is to be loving. It's easier to be critical 
than it is to be kind. Do you hear what I'm saying? It's easier to be the nasty side than it is to be the side that says I have the character of Almighty God. Isaiah 43. I don't know what I was doing with that. I was going to tell you point two, but I'm going to read you the scripture first. Isaiah 43 says, Forget the former things. Do not dwell on the past. See, I'm doing a new thing. Don't get caught up in who you've always been and think you always have to be that same person. I used to be a really critical, nasty person. I didn't even like myself. And I've gotten a lot better. Sometimes I do revert back. And yesterday, my oldest son, I was kind of having one of those moments where I could have snapped real easy and my eyeballs would have rolled in the back of my head. And I, I was like getting kind of stressed out and my oldest son said, man, I wish just for like 10 minutes you weren't a Christian and I could just see what it would really be like on. And I was like, no, Brad goes, are you kidding? She's gotten really close, AJ. <laughs> but sometimes we dwell on the past and who we used to be. We can have a whole new, fresh future. Right. Number two, you have to decide what it's going to take. 2 Kings 18, 1 through 4. Check this out. We're talking about King Hezekiah, and he, he moves into, into the into the uh, office of he's on the throne now, he's king, and he's 25 years old, and it says that he did what was right in the eyes of the Lord. He removed the high places, he smashed the sacred stones, and cut down the Asher poles. He broke into pieces the bronze snake that Moses had made, that all the people had turned into an idol, and they began worshiping this idol. Hezekiah trusted in the Lord, the God of Israel. This is so amazing. I want to read this to you. Listen as a result. Listen to what happened in verse 6. Because of this, because he decided what it was going to take, and he, and he moved into action in his life, here's what God did. He held fast to the Lord and did not stop following Him. If you have your Bible today, please underline this. He held fast to the Lord and did not stop following Him. He kept the commandments of the Lord that Moses had given, and the Lord was with him. He was successful in whatever he undertook. This is a recipe that God is giving you for your life. How many of you guys want to be successful? Yes? Here's the recipe for success. Hold fast, right, to the Lord, and do not stop following him. Keep the commandments of the Lord. And the Lord will be with you, and, and you will have success in whatever you undertake. Anything that you put your hands to, God will bless you. I'm telling you, third thing today. You know, one second, before I hit the third thing, we're going to do a whole message on that passage. We that's are, awesome. that's such a good passage, but I want you to understand, those were things that the generations prior had established. So it was generational things that had been passed down. And Hezekiah said, enough is enough. I decide to do something different. different. And I will remove the very temptation. Listen to me. If I don't want to eat chocolate chips every day, then I have to stop bringing them into my home. I have to stop going down the aisle where they are in the store. I have to remove the temptation. Apply it to any bad habit, any area of your life. If you want to stop, remove the temptation. Point number three. Decide to be disciplined. Man, discipline is a hard word. Kids don't like it. I didn't like it when I was little, and I still don't like it today. Actually, I do like it. But it's because I've studied it out so much. If we want to be disciples of Jesus Christ, we got to be disciplined. If we want to be successful people, we have to be disciplined. The Bible says in 1 Timothy 1 7, For God has not given us a spirit of fear and timidity, but of power and love and self Disciplines. I am telling you, God wants to give you a fresh start this year. So He wants you to be the person He has called you to be, the person that He created you to be, the person you really want deep down inside to be, and it's possible. So who do you want to be? Who do you really want to I want you to envision that person. What that person looks like, how they think, how they speak, how they treat people. And I want you to evaluate your life right now. And I want you to think about any habits in your life that are inconsistent or take you away from becoming the person that you see in your mind that God wants you to be. I want you to survey your heart, survey your life and say, Lord, show me, reveal to me, show me anything that is wicked inside of me and, and show me these things so I can go tear these things down. And literally clean house so that I can position myself to be who you want me to be. 
So if there's anything that you walk away with, it's I want you to walk away with this question because questions produce answers. Who do you want to be? Who do you want to be? What's it going to take? Right? I don't, I don't think you guys get it. I don't. Do you think they get it? Yeah, they do. I don't think they do. Do you guys need an illustration? Uh, to get it? Yes? Yes. Okay. There you go. Here's an illustration. And ask what people who get it. person, the character of becoming who you're called to be. Man, we've got so much of a difference to make in the lives of people that we work with, our family members, 
people that are our neighbors and just people that we do life with. I'm telling you, God wants to use you in an amazing way to make an impact and a difference in people's lives. And it's all about you becoming who He wants you to be, the person you need to be. You can do it. Would you stand up with us today? How many of you guys in this place would say, I want to be who God wants me to be? Would you raise your hand? Because I want to pray with you. Amen. Amen. I want to pray with you today. Would you bow your heads with me? Father, in the powerful name of Jesus, we can clearly see through your word that, that you created us in the image and the likeness of you. you. You destined us to be holy, to be set apart from the things that displease you and to cling to the things that, 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 that move you. Holiness. Right living, love, peace, joy. God, I pray in the powerful name of Jesus right now that every person that has been so honest and open and humble today to raise their hand and say, I want to be who God wants me to be. I pray, God, that you would bless them even now. I pray that as they look back upon their, their, their past and they see their scripted past, the story, in their mind, I pray, God, that no matter what that story looks like, that you would inspire them to understand and realize that today is a new day in you and all those old things have passed away and behold, all things become new in them, Father God. They're a brand new creation in you and God, today is a gift that you have given us and you're just asking, well, what are you going to do with it? God, you've given us the power to change. You've given us the, the ability to be disciplined about the things that would position us to please you. You've given us everything we need. So, Father, I pray, God, for a mind to change. I pray for an overhaul of our thinking. I pray, God, that you would empower us with your presence and show us and teach us your ways, oh Lord, that we would not continually fall short, God, but we would fast track our faith into the future, God, of knowing that, 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 that you have overwhelmed us with your presence, that greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. And that, God, you have given us a future in you. I'm so thankful, God, that you're doing this even now, Father. God, I, I pray over the vision that you've given each person in this room as they see the person that they want to be. And I pray that every day you would burn that image of Christ's likeness into their mind. Continually showing them what they're striving for, the measure to match. Show them the image of Christ inside of them and drive them to this goal to be like you. Do this in us. With heads bowed and eyes closed today, we want to give an opportunity for you to experience life like never before, to, to be consumed with the security, the confidence, the peace of knowing that your eternity is secure in Christ Jesus. That heaven can literally be your home when you leave this planet. No greater decision to ever be made. No greater step to be taken than to step towards God in brokenness, willingness, to accept it for who He is. And to live out your life the way He's called you to live. And you can have that. You can have that right now. With heads bowed and eyes closed, I want to give you an opportunity to make the best decision of your life. To know Jesus. To have a real and life-changing relationship with Him that is contagious. I'm going to count to three. And when I do, I, want, I just want to see your hand. I just want to know who you are so I can pray with you. So we can pray with you as a family right where you are. Are you ready? Life change on three. Here we go. One, two, three. Who are you in this place? See your hand. I see your hand. I see your hand. Anybody else today? 
anybody else. It goes for you guys online as well. Thank you, Lord, for those who have, who have realized, recognized that they are in a position where they need to live for God. They need to abandon their past and pursue their future. Thank you. Thankful, Lord, this morning for those who have made this decision. We want to pray with you as a family. This is how we do it at Mount River Church. We're going to pray with you. We're going to agree with you. And we're going to welcome you into the family of God. Are you ready? Father, we love you. We thank you for your son, Jesus. God, I know that I have made mistakes. I have fallen short. I ask you to forgive me now. Cleanse my heart. Make me new. I believe with all my heart that Jesus is who he says he is. I confess with my mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord. I dedicate myself. I discipline myself to live for you, O oh God, according to your word. Never to be the same again. In Jesus' name. Everybody said, Amen. Amen. Give God praise. Who do you want to be? Hey, thanks so much for joining us today. If you want to be a part of something bigger than yourself, give to our ministry. We've made giving easy here at Mountain Movers Church. If you have your smartphone, just text the number 918-223-8090. Just push in the amount you want to give and push send. It's that easy. If you don't have your smartphone, not a problem. You can mail your giving just as easy to 24,000 South 660 Road, Grove, Oklahoma 74344. Thanks for watching today. Hey, remember, we're dreaming big for you. We'll see you next week.